Welcome. I would imagine if you're anything like me, then you enjoy history. I've always been fascinated by it, and I've always enjoyed knowing what happened today in history. This is a collection of the significant events that have happened on each day in March. I put out a collection of history facts for each day, so if you enjoy knowing historical facts, then please subscribe and click the bell icon, and then you'll know when the next collection comes out. You'll notice some differences in the narrator over the course of the video. This month, I finally decided to use my own voice instead of an AI-generated voice, and you'll notice when that shift starts to take place if you stick around to the end of the video. Now, without further ado, let's take a look at the interesting facts that all happened in March. On the 1st of March, 1692, Salem Village, Massachusetts became the epicenter of hysteria, as three young women were brought before local magistrates, marking the start of the infamous Salem Witch Trials. Fast forward to 1815, Napoleon, fresh from his banishment on Elba, returned to France only to regain and then lose control of his homeland after his defeat at the Battle of Waterloo within the same year. In a more somber turn of events, on this day in 1932, aviator Charles Lindbergh's 20-month-old son Charles Jr. was kidnapped from his New Jersey home. His body wouldn't be discovered until May 12th. And finally, in 1974, the Watergate scandal reached a critical turning point as seven individuals were indicted for their roles in the Watergate break-in, charged with conspiracy to obstruct justice. On the 2nd of March, 1807, the U.S. Congress passed the act prohibiting importation of slaves, marking a significant step towards abolition. Fast forward to 1882, Queen Victoria was almost assassinated by a disgruntled poet, Roderick Maclean, who didn't appreciate her critique of his poetry. Jumping to 1901, the United States Steel Corporation was founded, becoming the first corporation in the world to hit a market capital of over $1 billion. Interestingly, in 1937, the Steelworkers Organizing Committee signed a collective bargaining agreement with U.S. Steel, effectively unionizing the United States steel industry. On the 3rd of March, 1776, the United States Marine Corps made their first amphibious landing, beginning the Battle of Nassau in the American Revolutionary War. Fast forward to 1913, where we find thousands of brave women marching in the woman's suffrage procession in Washington, D.C., a pivotal moment in the fight for women's rights. On the same day in 1986, the Australia Act together with a matching British Act of Parliament passed. This marked Australia's full independence from the United Kingdom. Finally, in 2005, Steve Fawcett became the first person to fly an airplane, non-stop around the world solo, without refueling. He also circumnavigated the globe in a balloon and sailboat. On the 4th of March, 1789, the first Congress of the United States met in New York City, bringing the United States Constitution to life. Fast forward to 1797, where John Adams became a first president to start his presidency. On the 4th of March, Interesting enough, Franklin D. Roosevelt, our 32nd president, was the last to be inaugurated on this very same date in 1933. And in 1976, the Northern Ireland Constitutional Convention was dissolved, which led to direct rule from London by the British Parliament. On the 4th of March, 1616, the Nicolaus Copernicus book on the revolutions of the heavenly spheres was added to the Catholic Index of Forbidden Books 73 years after publication. In 1770, the Boston Massacre, an event that would trigger the American Revolutionary War, occurred. Five Americans, including Crispus Attucks, were fatally shot by British troops. On the same day in 1946, during the Cold War, Winston Churchill coined the phrase Iron Curtain in his speech at Westminster College, Missouri, saying it had descended across the continent. Finally, in 1970, the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons was ratified and came into effect. It attempted to constrain nuclear weapons to states that had them before January 1967. On the 6th of March, 1665, the first issue of Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society was released. It is still the world's longest-running scientific journal. In 1836, after a grueling 13-day siege, the Battle of the Alamo ended with the tragic loss of 187 Texan volunteers, 
and the capture of the fort by 3,000 Mexican troops. In 1857, a controversial Supreme Court ruling stated the Constitution does not grant citizenship to black people. This gross injustice was later rectified by the 14th Amendment. And in 1964, when boxing champion Cassius Clay was officially given the name Muhammad Ali, a name that would become synonymous with greatness in the world of boxing. On the 7th of March, in the year 161, Marcus Aurelius and Lucius Ferris ascended to power as joint emperors of Rome following the death of Antoninus Pius. Fast forward to the same day in 1876, the innovator Alexander Graham Bell was granted a patent for his groundbreaking invention, which he dubbed as the telephone. In 1965, a dark day in American history known as Bloody Sunday unfolded as 600 brave civil rights marchers were brutally attacked by state and local police in Selma, Alabama. Finally, in 2007, a significant reform took place in the UK House of Lords. The British House of Commons voted to make the upper chamber, the House of Lords, entirely elected. On the 8th of March, 1775, a writer suspected to be Thomas Paine penned African slavery in America, a significant call for the abolition of slavery. Fast forward to 1936, Daytona Beach and Road Course held its inaugural oval stock car race, a pivotal moment in the birth of the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing. In 1979, Voyager 1 images analyzed by scientist Linda Morabito revealed the existence of volcanoes on Jupiter's moon, Io, a groundbreaking discovery. Lastly, in 2014, Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 mysteriously vanished mid-route from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing with 239 souls on board. This remains one of aviation's greatest unsolved mysteries. On the 9th of March, 1776, The Wealth of Nations, by Scottish economist Adam Smith, was published, introducing groundbreaking ideas about the division of labor, productivity, and free markets. In 1796, love was in the air for Napoleon Bonaparte. He married his first wife, Josephine de Beauharnais. However, their marriage was annulled in 1810 due to her inability to produce an heir for the emperor. 1959, a cultural icon was born. The Barbie doll made its first appearance at the American International Toy Fair in New York, and it's been a significant part of our culture and toy market for over six decades. And finally, in 1961, the space race was heating up. Sputnik 9 successfully launched, carrying a dog and a human dummy, proving to the world that the Soviet Union was ready to begin human spaceflight. On the 10th of March, 1661, the French son King Louis XIV began his personal rule of France after the death of his premier, the Cardinal Mazarin. Fast forward to 1831, when the French Foreign Legion was created by Louis Philippe, the King of France. He assembled it from the foreign regiments of the Kingdom of France. In India in 1922, Mahatma Gandhi was arrested and tried for sedition. He was sentenced to six years in prison, but was released after nearly two years due to medical reasons. Almost 100 years later in 2023, Silicon Valley Bank collapsed due to a run on its deposits, marking it the second largest bank failure in U.S. history. The FDIC took over its operations. On the 11th of March, 222, Roman Emperor Elagabalus met an untimely demise alongside his mother, Julia Soamias. His 14-year-old cousin Severus Alexander became emperor. In the realm of media and journalism, Back in 1702, England's first national daily newspaper, the Daily Courant, was published for the first time. A significant milestone for journalism indeed. Fast forward to 1985, where Mikhail Gorbachev was elected as General Secretary of the Communist Party, making him as the Soviet Union's last head of state before its dissolution in 1990. And finally, in 2020, the World Health Organization officially declared the COVID-19 virus epidemic a pandemic, a truly historic event with wide-ranging consequences that we're still experiencing today. On the 12th of March, 2011, the Fukushima nuclear power plant became a ticking time bomb, 
releasing radioactivity into the atmosphere following a devastating earthquake and tsunami. In 1993, North Korea was making headlines by announcing its withdrawal from the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons and denying inspectors access to its nuclear sites. In 1933, during the Great Depression, Franklin D. Roosevelt, the newly minted President of the United States, addressed the nation in his first fireside chat, a tradition that would define his presidency. Finally, in 1930, Mahatma Gandhi embarked on the historic Salt March, a 200-mile protest against the British monopoly on salt in India. This non-violent act of defiance became a pivotal moment in Indian independence. Did you know that on the 13th of March 2020, the tragic death of Breonna Taylor, a victim of police brutality in Louisville, Kentucky, ignited nationwide protests against racism. In the same year, and on the same day as that tragic event, President Donald Trump declared a national emergency in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, a rare move for a medical crisis. Rewinding to 1993, the eastern United States was hit by what's known as the Storm of the Century, or the 93 Superstorm, blanketing many areas under feet of snow with record low temperatures. And if we go way back to 1639, did you know that Harvard College was named after clergyman John Harvard, serving as the traditional undergraduate program for what is now known as Harvard University? Did you know that back on the 14th of March, 1794, Eli Whitney was granted a patent for the cotton gin? Fast forward to 1900, the US currency was placed on the gold standard with the ratification of the Gold Standard Act. In a different vein, in 1942, Ann Miller was the first American to be treated with penicillin, thanks to Orvin Hess and John Bumstead. Lastly, in 1964, Jack Ruby was convicted for the murder of Lee Harvey Oswald, the assumed assassin of John F. Kennedy. On March 15, 44 BC, the Ides of March was a fateful day for Julius Caesar as it marked his assassination, a pivotal moment that changed the course of Roman history. Fast forward to 1917, Tsar Nicholas II of Russia abdicated the Russian throne, bringing an end to the 304-year Romanov dynasty, a dramatic end to a long-lasting reign. In 1965, President Lyndon B. Johnson, amidst the Selma crisis, boldly declared, we shall overcome to the U.S. Congress. His words were a commitment to the Voting Rights Act. Lastly, in 1991, the Cold War era saw a significant shift. The Treaty on the Final Settlement with respect to Germany was enacted, granting full sovereignty to the Federal Republic of Germany. On the 16th of March, 1802, the Army Corps of Engineers was established to found and operate the United States Military Academy at West Point. Fast forward to 1935, Adolf Hitler defied the Treaty of Versailles, ordering Germany to rearm and reintroducing conscription to form the Wehrmacht. Now, let's jump to 1995. An astonishing fact. Mississippi was the last state to formally ratify the 13th Amendment of 1865, abolishing slavery. And finally, in 2020, the Dow Jones Industrial Average endured its single largest point drop in history surpassing even the crash of Black Monday in 1929. On the 17th of March 180 AD, 18-year-old Commodus ascended the throne to become emperor of the Roman Empire, following the death of his father, Marcus Aurelius. Fast forward to 1958, and the United States was making history by launching the first solar-powered satellite, which also happened to be the first to achieve a long-term orbit. In 1969, Israel saw a breakthrough in gender equality when Golda Meir became the first female prime minister of the country. She was the fourth prime minister of Israel from 1969 to 1974. Lastly, in 1992, South Africa took a significant step towards racial equality. A referendum to end apartheid passed with over two-thirds of the people in favor, marking a new era for the nation. On the 18th of March, 1899, Phoebe a satellite of Saturn, was the first to be discovered by William Henry Pickering using photographs. Fast forward to 1942, the War Relocation Authority was established in the United States, 
a dark chapter where Japanese Americans were taken into custody. In 1968, the U.S. Congress made a significant change to our economy, repealing the requirement for a gold reserve to back us currency, marking the end of the gold standard. And finally, in 1990 the largest art theft in U.S. history occurred. A staggering $500 million worth of paintings were stolen from the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston. On March 19, 1649, the House of Commons of England made a bold move by passing an act to abolish the House of Lords, only to be overturned by the House of Lords and the King. Fast forward to 1863, the SS Georgiana, the most powerful Confederate cruiser, met a tragic end on her maiden voyage, carrying a cargo worth over a million dollars. In a twist of fate, exactly 102 years later, the wreck of the SS Georgiana was discovered by a teenage diver, E. Lee Spence. The value of the wreck in 1965? A staggering $50 million. And finally, in 1918, the U.S. Congress established time zones and approved daylight savings time. Studies show an increase in heart attacks on the Monday following the shift to daylight savings time. Thanks, Congress. On the 20th of March, 1854, in the small town of Ripon, Wisconsin, the Republican Party of the United States was born. Abraham Lincoln was elected as a member of this party. Fast forward to 1916, a truly revolutionary year. Albert Einstein published his general theory of relativity. This theory completely transformed our understanding of physics and the universe. In 1987, a groundbreaking event occurred in the medical world. The Food and Drug Administration approved the use of AZT, the first ever anti-AIDS drug, a critical weapon against this devastating disease. Lastly, let's jump to the same day in 2015. A rare celestial event took place. A solar eclipse, equinox, and a supermoon all occurred on the same day. A truly remarkable confluence of events. On the 21st of March, 1152, King Louis VII of France and Queen Eleanor of Aquitaine annulled their marriage. She later became Queen of England, married to Henry II. Fast forward to 1788, New Orleans was nearly wiped off the map when a catastrophic fire destroyed 856 of the city's 1100 structures. From Burgundy to Chartres Street, almost to the Mississippi River, in 1925, Tennessee introduced the controversial Butler Act, prohibiting the teaching of human evolution. This led to the infamous Scopes Monkey Trial, immortalized in the play, Inherit the Wind. Lastly, in 1965, Martin Luther King Jr. led a historic civil rights march from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama, marking a significant milestone in the fight for racial equality in the United States. On March 22, 1765, the British Parliament passed the Stamp Act, introducing a direct tax on its American colonies, a prelude to hostilities that would eventually lead to war. Fast forward to 1894, when the first ever Stanley Cup ice hockey competition took place in Montreal, Canada. It's the oldest existing trophy for a professional sports franchise in North America. 1933 saw Nazi Germany open its first concentration camp, Dachau. The camp was initially intended to intern Hitler's political opponents and became the site of crimes against humanity. Lastly, in 1972, the U.S. Congress attempted to push forward the Equal Rights Amendment, sending it to states for ratification. It never passed. Not until the year before were 14th Amendment protections extended to women. On the 23rd of March, 1775, Patrick Henry stirred the American Revolutionary War with his rousing speech, Give me liberty or give me death in Richmond, Virginia. Fast forward to 1933, the Reichstag passed the Enabling Act, making Adolf Hitler the dictator of Germany and setting the stage for the events of the ensuing years of war and misery. Moving on to 1983, President Ronald Reagan proposed the Strategic Defense Initiative a plan to develop technology to intercept enemy missiles. It became known as the Star Wars Initiative. And in a more recent event from 2021, the Ever Given, a container ship, ran aground, obstructing the Suez Canal for an astounding six days, bringing the word supply chain into common use. On the 24th of March, 1199, 
England's King Richard I was wounded by a crossbow bolt in France, a wound that would lead to his death just a few weeks later. Moving forward to 1900, New York City's mayor, Robert Anderson Van Wyck, initiated the Underground Rapid Transit Railroad connecting Manhattan and Brooklyn. In 1944, during the height of World War II, 76 Allied prisoners of war made a daring escape from the German camp Stalag Luft III, an event later immortalized in the movie The Great Escape. Lastly, in 1989, the Exxon Valdez spilled a staggering 240,000 barrels of crude oil, or the equivalent of approximately 10.8 million U.S. gallons in Prince William Sound, Alaska, after running aground. On the 25th of March, 1306, Robert the Bruce ascended the Scottish throne. He led the first War of Scottish Independence and was king from 1306 until his death in 1329. On the same day in 1811, English poet Percy Bysshe Shelley stirred controversy by being expelled from Oxford University for publishing a provocative pamphlet titled The Necessity of Atheism. In 1957, the European Economic Community was born. It was comprised of West Germany, France, Italy, Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg. It was later fully absorbed by the EU in 2009. Lastly, on the 25th of March, 1979, the first fully functional space shuttle orbiter, Columbia, was delivered to the John F. Kennedy Space Center, readying for its inaugural launch. All of these events share the same day of the year, the 26th of March. In 1812, the term gerrymander was born in a Boston Gazette political cartoon. Fast forward to 1830, the Book of Mormon was published in Palmyra, New York. The book is one of the earliest and most well-known writings of the Latter-day Saint movement. Jumping to 1915, the Vancouver Millionaires secured their place in hockey history by winning the first championship against the Pacific Coast Hockey Association in the Stanley Cup Finals. Lastly, in 1971, East Pakistan declared independence from Pakistan, forming Bangladesh and sparking the Bangladesh Liberation War. Today, Bangladesh is the eighth most populous country in the world. All of these events happened on the 27th of March. In 1625, Charles I became the king of not just one, but four countries, England, Scotland, Ireland, and France. In 1866, Andrew Johnson, the US president, voted to veto the Civil Rights Act of 1866, but Congress overrode his veto and passed the bill into law just a little later on April 9th. In 1912, the First Lady, Helen Taft, and the Japanese ambassador's wife planted two cherry trees in Washington, D.C., and the seeds of the National Cherry Blossom Festival. Finally, we fast forward to 1981 in Poland. The Solidarity Movement staged a warning strike, causing at least 12 million Poles to walk off their job for four hours. These events all happened on the 28th of March. In 193 A.D., the Roman Emperor Pertinax was assassinated by the Praetorian Guard, and his throne was literally auctioned off to Didius Julianus. Moving on to 1854 and the Crimean War, both France and Britain declared war on Russia. The tensions of that time led to a significant conflict in European history. The war made Florence Nightingale famous. In 1979, a significant accident occurred at Three Mile Island's Unit 2 nuclear reactor. A coolant leak caused the core to overheat, leading to a partial meltdown. This event triggered a major rethink of nuclear safety. And in 1990, a touching moment in history occurred. Jesse Owens, the legendary athlete, was posthumously awarded the Congressional Gold Medal by President George H.W. Bush. All of these events happened on the 29th of March. In the heart of the Cold War, in 1951, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg were found guilty of conspiracy to commit espionage. Next, we travel to 1973, marking the end of an era as the last United States combat soldier takes the final voyage away from South Vietnam, a significant turning point in the Vietnam War. The next year, in 1974, we find ourselves in Shaanxi Province, China. Imagine the awe as the Terracotta Army is unearthed, an archaeological discovery that continues to captivate us even today. And lastly, a recent event from 2021, the colossal ship Ever Given was stuck in the Suez Canal, causing a global trade hiccup. Thankfully, it was dislodged on this very day, providing much relief to the supply chain of the world. On the 30th of March, these things happened. 1822, the United States recognized the new territory of Florida. Fast forward to 1842, 
The world of medicine was revolutionized when ether anesthesia was first used by American surgeon Dr. Crawford Long. Jumping to 1900, archaeologists in Knossos, Crete, unearthed the first clay tablet with hieroglyphic writing in a script we now call Linear B. And finally, in 2017, SpaceX made history when it became the first to launch an orbital class rocket into space that had already been to space. Did you know that the Eiffel Tower was officially opened on the 31st of March, 1889? Well, it was. But in researching the rest of the events for this day, I found out about the Scandal Concert, or as it's also known, the Slap Concert. It was conducted by Arnold Schoenberg on the 31st of March, 1913. The audience was so shocked by the experimental music that a riot broke out, ending the concert prematurely. Amid the chaos, the organizer, Erhard Buschbeck, allegedly slapped a concert goer, leading to a lawsuit. And the best part? Operetta composer Oscar Strauss, who witnessed the assault, claimed that the slap was the most harmonious sound of the evening.